scalars and vectors. Scalars you're already familiar with. Vectors you might or might not have seen them. And even if you have seen vectors before, um, I would like you to pay particular attention to the way that we use vectors in this class because it may, the notation and, and the usage may be different, especially the definition of the word magnitude from um, other definitions that you might have seen in your math or other classes. Um, the scalar, you may not remember that word before, but you've all uh, dealt with it before. It's just a different word um, for something you're already familiar with. Why are we introducing these weird things? And, and the answer is that the language of physics is mathematics, and vectors allow us to elegantly describe a lot of physical phenomena that would be much more cumbersome to, to, to describe using scalars. All right, let's get right to it and define a scalar and a vector and state how each is represented typographically and state how the vectors are represented graphically. Um, so typographically and graphically. Typographically is how we write it, graphically is how we draw it. Scalar quantity, quantity can be described by a single number and is represented typographically by an italic symbol in regular type. So, I mean, by regular, you might say, well, regular type is an italic type. Um, italic type is a slanted type, but what I mean by regular type here is it's not bold face type. Okay, so an example of a scalar is the temperature. It's represented by a capital T in italics, slanted, and it's not bold face. That's what I mean by this. And that's an example of a scalar. Um, the depth of the water is a scalar. The, um, and you might say, well, hang on, there, there is a, a... No, you, you don't say hang on. You're, you're good with that. It's just a single number. Anything that could be represented by a single number is called a scalar. Okay, and you have a lot of experience with that. What's a vector? A vector quantity has both magnitude, which is a positive scalar, meaning greater than zero, and a direction. So the magnitude, this is an important concept right here, and I would encourage you to, to commit this one, uh, well, this and all other concepts to memory. Um, but the magnitude is a positive scalar, and a direction is just a direction in space. So uh, let's give an example, a displacement. Um, if I want to move from one point to another, and I want to walk a distance of four meters. Um, so in, in this particular case here, this, well, this isn't quite four meters, let's pretend it is. If I start here and I end up over here, that's called a displacement. And we'll talk about that more in the next chapter. That displacement has a particular direction because I'm going this way, I'm not going this way or in some other direction. So to, to fully characterize that displacement, I need not only the distance that I travel, but also the direction that I traveled in. That's where vectors come in. So this is an example of a, of a vector displacement. I start here, I end here, and um, so it's like going from Logan to Smithfield, how many ever, how many ever miles it is, four miles, I don't know. Um, and what direction is it in? Well, it's north. Smithfield is north of us. Um, so on notation now for vectors, typographically, the vector is represented by a bold face symbol with an over arrow, an arrow over the top. So that's the notation for a vector. It's bold face, as you can see. It's not italic, and it has an arrow over the top of it. 
that arrow reminding us that it's a vector and it has a direction as well as a magnitude. Um, the magnitude of the vector, so this, this quantity right here, a magnitude is a scalar. And how's a scalar represented? A scalar is represented by italic symbol in not boldface type. And so the, this is the representation of the magnitude of this vector, of this displacement vector A. And I can set that magnitude equal to 4 meters. I cannot set A equal to 4 meters. I can't set a vector equal to a scalar. This is a mathematically incorrect statement. A vector has both a magnitude and a direction. So it would be correct to say that A equals 4 meters to the east, say, or to the north, or whatever. So then I'm giving both pieces of information that are part of the definition of a vector. Okay? So how do we represent these vectors graphically? It's represented by an arrow pointing from the tail of the vector. So the tail is the starting point of the vector, and the head of the vector is the ending point of it. And then, and, and it's an arrow pointing toward the head of the vector. So I'm just trying to get you used to the idea of this, this being the tail of the vector. If it's an, it's an arrow with your bow and arrow, for example, the tail is a little, has a little notch on it that you fit to the string of your, of your bow. And the head of the arrow is where the sharp point is on the arrow. All right, headed in the direction of the vector and with the length of the arrow proportional to the magnitude of the vector. So if we have two different displacements, displacement A, the displacement vector, and displacement B, with B having twice the magnitude of A, namely 8 meters versus 4 meters, then we're going to write the length, normally we'll, we'll have the length of that arrow that's representing the vector, this arrow here, be proportional to the magnitude of the vector. And since this is twice as long as, as the other one, Here's the, the length of A, 4 meters, plus 4 meters would be B. All right, uh, displacement vector for a car that moves a distance of 2 kilometers in a direction 30 degrees north of east. Okay, that's a mouthful. Here's my vector. It's, it's a displacement vector, like we talked about. Here's the magnitude. That's the distance traveled, two kilometers. And the direction is 30 degrees north of east. So this is the magnitude, and this is the direction. And you need both bits of information to fully specify the vector. So here's 30 degrees north of east as the uh, direction. Then the magnitude of the vector we can write as two kilometers. All right, um, so graphically here, if we have north, south, east, and west, and we'll use this a lot, um, if north is up the screen in this way, then east will always be toward the right. So if you're facing north, in this particular room, north is, is in this direction. If I'm facing north, then east will be on my right-hand side, and west will be on my left side, and south will be behind me. So, the same thing here. If I'm facing north, which is up the screen like that, then east would be over toward my right. And um, so a, a direction that's 30 degrees north of east, so here we've got north, this is east, and I want a direction that's 30 degrees north of east. So I have to come up that angle of 30 degrees starting from east and then moving north of east by 30 degrees. So that's, uh, that's how to draw that vector. And then the, if it's a displacement vector, this guy is going to travel two kilometers from starting point 
to his um, finishing point. 